Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. Now, it's real time. Sponsored by the Mill Casino. Welcome back, everyone. We're joined by Ken Vellante. He is the man behind Cold Water Strong. We're talking about an extremely effective way to target Fall Chinook. Um, and it's one that if you've never done before and you've been curious about, we've answered all these questions. You can always go back and kind of review if you, will, if you wish. But once you have the chance to do it, you'll see that it's not as intimidating as a lot of people um, believe that it is. Because there is a lot going on here, but once you understand the system and you get it deployed correctly, it can be extremely effective. Just Correct. hold on, watch your rod. I mean, just watch your rod. But, so you got your main line obviously is coming to your, your uh, spreader here, mm -hmm. your setup, and then it's going at the other end is a sandbag. This Correct. is really the key. Yes, it is the key. And traditionally in the past, we've used different types of weight systems. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is we're, um, we used to deposit a lot of bricks, mm -hmm. rocks, rocks. Yeah. and boulders and tying light line to it. So with this system right here, um, this is an eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. You're just going to use the bank sand and mm -hmm. you're going to fill this up. Um, and then your, your main line is attached to there with a duo snap to a pin. So once the fish hits, mm -hmm. um, if it does pull the pin out, great. But if it don't, all you have to do is, is basically tighten up the line and mm -hmm. jerk hard once on the rod. And this is what's going to happen is that pin, as you can see it, pulls out and then releases. And then this line pulls out and it dumps the sand out and then you retrieve this whole bag back. And it's got a float in there that helps float that thing up. Correct. And so now it's just you and the fish. Correct. Okay. Which by itself is a tremendous advantage. Correct. Uh, but uh, sand dumps right out. You're fighting the fish clean. Correct. And then, of course, when you reset everything, you just fill that bag right up. Uh, exactly. And so it's reusable. And uh, basically, you're just redeploying the sand out there. Uh, yeah. You mentioned in the commercial break, I want to make sure we get it out there, that, you know, don't be using this up at Bonneville on the rocks. Correct. Okay? Correct. Uh, down in the lower reaches of the river, most of it's on the Washington side, a lot of it's on the Oregon side. Yes. It's typically all sand, right? Correct. And w in those situations, this bag is not going to get damaged. Yeah, so most of the, most of the lower Columbia uh, in, you know, some of the places there, uh, a lot of the places is sandy beaches, yeah. and and that's where this is has been developed for the Lower Columbia. Sure, and that's exactly yeah. what that was designed for. I mean, it's a long story, yes, history behind uh, those bags. Yes. Okay. So, folks are watching. There's going to be people heading over to Fisherman's. They're going to be blowing up your website. <laughs> Any advice that you can give them for the first time users? Because this is the time right yeah. now, yeah. all the way through the closure in the middle of September. Although. We'll talk more about that going forward. Any advice that you can give everyone? Yes, the biggest advice I give is that you need a rod to handle this. Okay. And a lot of the guys that called me up says, yeah, I want to get into this and pull these out there. I want to fish. I've seen a lot of people catch fish, mm -hmm. but I have a nine, six foot rod. Uh, no. No. Right. Get a heavy duty rod. This here is an edge rod mm -hmm. and um, it's a great rod that will actually pull this pin mm -hmm. and give you the opportunity to have enough backbone to actually fight the fish in uh, very efficiently. Yeah, and, and this is the same uh, edge rod that we've talked about in the past. There's Correct. three different versions, yes. a light, a medium, and a heavy. Get the heavy. Get the heavy. Yep. Get the heavy rods and, and you'll be just fine. It's such an yeah. advantage. Have it. You can absolutely use I would call old school only because mm -hmm. we've been using 14 footers for a very, very long time uh, when you're talking about casting, right? Now, these are 11.3 or 11.6, if I rem mm -hmm. remember correctly. Uh, that's the perfect length. You can cast that everywhere Correct. that you would ever want to, but when you're doing this system, it's got enough backbone where you can pop that pin just like mm -hmm. you're saying without hopefully pulling the hook on the fish while you're doing it at the same time. You got Correct. a lot going on out there. You got yeah. a lot of room to play with, but it will pop that pin. Correct. Correct. All right. uh, anything else we can make sure that they're aware well, of? Well, you know, um, coming into the fall fall season with all of this system out there, um, you're going to see a lot of people out there running the same system, or mm -hmm. they're making their own sure. and stuff. But um, you're, you're, you're going to get a lot of good help out there. There's a lot of good folks out there in the bank that will help you and stuff. So, If yeah. there are folks out there, and there will be, I, I know how I would answer this yeah. question. Prefer, and they're going, well, where? Yeah. Where can we go? What rock? <laughs> rock and okay. We're not going to do that. No. Okay. So it's a boat trip. 
you're going to see them. You can't miss it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lots of places online that you can find out different information here and there. There's plenty of room. I'll, I'll just put it to you that yeah. way. Sometimes going from one beach to the next will help you, uh, you know, find an area that's not so crowded, crowded. I would say. Yeah. But those fish are always moving. It doesn't make any difference. If you've got this the system set up correctly mm -hmm. in an area where fish are traveling, which by the way, it's wet, just mm -hmm. be in the river, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got a really good chance of getting I got uh, one point to, sure. to really give the, the folks out there a tip. Mm -hmm. Normally we're running this on an outgoing tide. Oh yeah, good point. Yes. So um, watch your tides, but at the same time, even in an incoming tide, Owen, we have flow on the bottom of the river. Sure. This river has to still go out. Yeah. We are catching fish on the incoming. So the surface might be either slack. Slack, still. Mm -hmm. but, that, but you got that out there so far in the bottom of the river, deep yeah. water. And you have the advantages still floating this. Gotcha. And, but here's another tip. Brad's make a smaller wobbler. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And they work really well in the incoming. Yeah, when that tide is real slow. It's l really light and, and, it's, and when it's really slow. So would you say, this is kind of a load of, maybe not, uh, if it is an incoming tide and that's the only time that you can get out there, right? Yeah. Because not everybody can play a tide book. Correct. Or I say tide book. That's how old I am. <laughs> not everybody can play the tide and be there at the perfect timing. Correct. So it's not necessarily uh, that only can go on the outgoing tide. Yeah. If you can get out there at a, maybe even a smaller exchange on the on the outgo. Correct. Uh, but with the floats, it will still help keep those things in the zone. Yes, the it, 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 as long as you're deployed down there 35, 40 feet, these right. will float up and we still have current going out. Gotcha. And using the smaller wobblers is effective. And there's a lot of them. Yes, there's a lot. Remember of them. the okay lure? Oh, I'm yeah. not saying that. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and there's, there's a lot of options that are out there. Correct. Uh, maybe that's another thing that we can wrap. I still got a, a minute or two here, right, Ryan? Just make sure I'm good. Uh, um, heavy outgoing tide. Let's go the other direction. Yeah. Now, Brad's and Simon both yes. make uh, heavier wobblers for those situations. Both of them make beautiful wobblers. Yeah. And 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 with array of colors. So um, the heavier tides. Absolutely. Use all their different, the larger wobblers. Okay. Big yeah. dogs are still one of my favorites. I know that yeah. they weren't the most popular wobbler, but I caught a lot of fish on them. Typically, it's on those heavy outgo tides. Uh, but there's a lot of options that are out there. So certainly, this is just another way that you can go chase these salmon around. Uh, but there's a reason why I wanted to spend as much time as we have today with Ken talking about it. Uh, it's I, I have to go back to the fact that this is not something that you can do everywhere. Mm -hmm. But in the areas that you can, it's extremely effective. And it's just one of those ways that you can you know, just change the game up. And Correct. if you've got a family, right, one of the funnest places to be is on the beach, mm -hmm. okay, where you can barbecue and, and, and have just fun with everybody that's there. Uh, and hopefully if things work out well, uh, utilize this system mm -hmm. and uh, uh, be successful. So mm -hmm. head over to Fishman's, find them there. Uh, lots of ways that you can do so. Uh, and just come up with what works best for you. Correct. Correct. Uh, and there's no shortage of ways. And there's so many different things. That, yeah. that he makes. I mean, it's endless. How yeah. many different products do you make when you're talking about these pre rig kind of setups? Um, I make about 12 different products. Jeez. 12 different products and that they're are just all pre rigged. They're all plug and play. It's all plug and play. And that's just from me bank fishing over the ba uh, past of the years. Oh, yeah. and how many times do we sit in the bank and we're sitting there tying? That's all you're doing. We're tying. Yeah. We're, and we're not in the water. Yeah. Yep. So one day I decided we need to pre rig these out. Yeah. Well, from all of us that fish <laughs> on the bank, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quite honestly, thank exactly. you. Because we can tie it all up ourselves, yeah. but it's none of them, are, you're not going to make it as high quality. I can just yeah. simply say Every, if, everything's all machine crimped yeah. and high quality it, materials. It, if you haven't put any of these in your hands yet, just again, you can do that over fishing. Yeah. You can put your hands on the thing uh, and look at it and go, holy smokes, yeah. these are overbuilt. And that's the way that they should yeah. be. But hey, thanks for coming in on a Saturday. Thank you. Sharing some info. Yeah. Uh, and really helping others get going with this because it was really intimidating for yeah. a lot of folks. Those questions came in very, very quickly. Yeah. And there was no, sh and for all of you, I hope we answered those questions for you. Uh, and thank you for coming in uh, as well. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes for your deal of the week and to wrap things up. So don't go anywhere.